Oh, for fuck's sake. Right, leave it with me. I'll, I'll do that now. Yeah, okay. All right, I'll, I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, all right, bye. Mute yourself, Matt. Right, we're on. Okay, thank you. Good evening, members. Good evening, officers. Welcome to our uh, Town Centre Revival Committee uh, this evening. Um, we have 10 items on our agenda uh, to get through uh, this evening, and we have uh, members uh, who are not members of the committee here who wish to speak on some of those items later on uh, in the meeting. This is a remote meeting uh, of the full council that is of the council meeting that is being streamed live onto the council's YouTube channel. Uh, we are not in control of the live comment section, so if you are using them, please do so considerately of others. Um, we. Uh, we start with apologies for absence. There are none. We are a full house of members uh, this evening. Um, agenda item two, uh, and if I could just ask all, all of our participants, if you are not speaking, to just put yourself on mute uh, so that uh, there isn't any interruptions uh, from anywhere else. So, Leslie, if you could just put yourself on mute, that would be very helpful. Um, Agenda item two is uh, declarations of interest. Does any member uh, wish to declare an interest in relation to any of the items this evening? No. Uh, no member is indicating. Thank you, members. Agenda item three are the minutes of our previous meeting that was held on the 26th of January. Firstly, are there any matters arising from the minutes that any member wishes to raise? In which case, if I can ask members of the committee to unmute themselves, we will call the vote uh, on the minutes of the previous meeting. Councillor Harrison? In favour. Councillor Burton Sampson? In favour. Councillor Headley? Nine. Sorry, say that again. I didn't catch that. <coughs> Abstain. I thought I'd do something different for a change. Okay. I'll have you get your kicks. Councillor Morris? I'm going to abstain on this occasion, Chairman. Councillor Henry? Looks like a habit forming, I'll abstain to. Okay, not a clue why, but there you go. Um, so the, the minutes of the meeting, which were a true record, and there wasn't any matters arising from any member of the committee, have passed as a true record. Agenda item four is the work programme. This is listed on pages uh, 11 uh, to 12 of your agendas this evening. Uh, does any member wish to have uh, anything added uh, to the report that is listed? Um, it does say for the benefit of the people watching that we will bring to the June meeting uh, an update uh, on the arena, an, act an activation plan for the opening of the uh, cinema, which will take place in the autumn, uh, an update on our inclusive Basildon project, uh, and also uh, approving the Basildon Town Centre cultural strategy. Councillor Harrison? Can we add the normal town centre updates, please? Yeah. So the Wickford, Langdon and Pitsy get a mention. Yeah, they will be standard items on the agenda. Any other member? No. Now, of course, what happens later on in our meeting may dictate whether we come back with a few more. Councillor Headley. Can you add Billericke to that? Then they feel left out sometimes. We would hate for that to happen. So, of course, they will be included in the uh, Town Centre updates. Um, but yeah, uh, we may wish to add to this after our debate later on uh, this evening. Members, the uh, recommendation is to consider and uh, endorse and therefore um, uh, in fact it says notes. So, we normally vote on them, Chairman. Yeah, I think we should take a vote on the work programme. So members, if you can unmute yourself, uh, we will vote on the uh, on the work program. Councillor Harrison? In favour. Councillor Burton Sampson? In favour. Councillor Headley? Noted. It's not a vote. How are you voting? It was for noting, wasn't it? I've called a vote. How are you voting? I'm going to abstain. Abstain. Councillor Morris? Four. Oh. Councillor Henry? Four. Oh. And I vote in favour as well. So the recommendation has passed. Agenda item five is that standing item. 
uh, of our town centre updates. Uh, and if we allow uh, Matt to run through them all, uh, and then uh, we will take questions on block at the end. So Matt, over to you. Thank you very much. Okay, hopefully you can all see my screen. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay, starting in Basildon Town Centre itself, um, East Square. So the installation of the facade has now commenced and um, the commercial, the F&B units, uh, the build is almost complete on those. So what you can see up there on, in the top corner is um, obviously the uh, the hexagons there are going on the building. So that's quite an exciting sort of moment for, for the evolution of the scheme, which is really good to see. Um, and also over the next few weeks, the hoarding um, around the scheme will be taken down and it's going to be replaced with Harris fencing, so, which will allow the um, uh, external work to be completed. They'll be able to sort of move in and out of that space a bit easier. And it will also uh, be much more visible for people to see what's happening at ground floor level. So it, it's hopefully quite some, some exciting moments actually with this project. Um, the marketing of the commercial units is picking up some momentum, um, though it obviously remains a challenging time. Um, as I've said before, um, negotiations are progressing very well with one um, particular um, tenant that we that we consider would would be an anchor tenant here. It's a, it's a national chain, and we um, want to be able to announce that in due course. Um, there's been good discussions with other um, potential operators, uh, including nationals as well. So I think on this one, it's a bit of a watch this space and we'll, we'll let you know as soon as we're able to tell you any more information around that. But some, but some good, exciting progress being made. Um, in terms of the build on site, there has been um, just worth noting there has been some delays um, as a result of uh, material coming into the site and that's um uh, that i think that was to do with the uh, the the closing of the ports around the christmas time that's just had a bit of a knock-on effect on on what's going on with um some of the deliveries uh, and there's also um a, a scaffold license was needed with the natwest building on on the um over towards east walk as well but mclaren have been able to pull some of that time back and um the building is on course for handover to empire in July. So we've been um, continuing to liaise well with Empire. Um, they are, yeah, they're looking to take occupation in July, August, and it will, it's worth noting, it's going to take at least six months for their fit out um, to their required specifications. So the, the current date for the cinema is expected to be mid February 2022 to coincide with half term. So that's kind of a working assumption at the moment. That may well change. Um, obviously, these are sort of tough times for cinemas. So we've just got to keep a watching brief on that. But um, that's what we're aiming for at the moment. So um, what we're also seeing is some really nice um, internal images from Empire about their fit out. And, um, and I, again, I'd like to be able to share some of those with members that can't yet but um hopefully in due course i'll be able to uh, share some of those and, and they're, it's looking great this it's looking really exciting actually the ideas for the finishes internally um very quick on uh, great oaks because we're dealing with this in a bit more detail in part two but i thought i'd just do a quick part one update in terms of the um uh, the youtube uh so discussions are progressing well with btcm who are the land owners um, and um, we're agreeing the terms and the package of works for car park one, which is the first part of this to come forward, um, with a view to submitting a planning application for the improvement works to car park one imminently, um, hopefully later um, this month, in fact, um, or, or just uh, early next month. So plans for the former post office and car park two are being refined. Um, we're doing a lot of work with planning at the moment. Um, and uh, we're in that pre-app process. And it's just worth noting that, that an environmental impact assessment is being prepared to support that planning application. And then just also architectural plans for car park two, uh, 12 are advancing well. Obviously that's a little bit behind those, those first, uh, that, the first phase, which is car park one and car park two, um, but that's, that's also um, 
uh, going well with our architect team. So more on that later. Um, I was going to take this slide out because obviously uh, um, we've had the college on, we know it's handed over, et cetera. But I thought it's just worth noting that um, uh, the building opened for the first time um, to a small number of students on the 8th of March, which is, which is again, a really nice moment in time. Um, so the first students have actually been in the new college, which is, which is really encouraging. Um, and, um, you know, uh, you know, hopefully a really good um, indicator for what's to come for that. Um, the youth zone, so principal terms have been agreed with the landowners BTCM. Obviously, we've um, had a much more detailed update at the last um, uh, TCR. Um, the planning application has been submitted and that's scheduled for um, determination at planning committee next week on 16th. Ambulance Hub, so approval was secured at uh, Policy and Resources Committee on the 28th of January for the council to enter into the necessary legal documents to, to move that project forward. Um, the, the key document on that is a development agreement with the uh, East England Ambulance Service. And once that is in place, the design work will com commence and then obviously all of the associated consultation will be undertaken and people will be able to see the designs, etc. So um, just also to, to note that our surveys are underway at the moment on that site. Anything else? So uh, work is progressing in relation to the major planning applications, um, approval granted for um, Town Square North um, last week, I think it was last week, um, with decisions expected later this month for the Youth Zone, um, Market Square, Eastgate and the Great Oaks um, application. So the Great Oaks, the GSA application on the old car phone warehouse um, site. And then just to say the cultural calendar that's continuing throughout March, I mentioned this last time, obviously these events are dependent on COVID restrictions. So that will, that will come much more into the fore once we're, once we're all out of lockdown, hopefully later in the summer. And then the cultural strategy, this has now been shared with the arts community for their thoughts and their comments. And that will come back to TCR for approval in due course. OK, moving on to Wickford again, we've got another one here, which has got a full report later in part two as there's some commercially sensitive information. Um, but just by way of a part one update and discussions are ongoing with the adjoining landowner, Harriet, and the discussions revolve around an improved supermarket offer with significant public realm improvements and the council land. Um, would be needed to provide parking to support the new development. So um, just to know a best consideration report has been undertaken and informs a report to PR committee later this week on the 11th of March, where approval is being sought to enter into a formal legal agreement with Heriot. But we'll go into more detail on this site later on in part two. Another one um, that we've got in part two, uh, a full site, uh, a full report, is the southern end of the market site or Woodlands Road. As previously reported, the deal with um, Weatherspoons development, um, that, that development is not progressing. And um, we've already advised committee members of that previously. And officers have now reviewed alternative options for this site, including a mixed use scheme or a new market. Um, so a recommendation will be made to PR committee later in the week. Um, and that will be the, um, the disposal of the site to Semper Homes, um, but we'll go into more detail on that in part two. And if, uh, yeah, further details will be presented later. And then um, just an update on Gibraltar Walk. So as we know, in January uh, 2021, PNR approved um, to dispose of the site. What we can now say is now we're out of the um, of the OGU, um uh, restrictions in terms of information, we can now say that that site is due to be disposed to Montpellier Estates, who are a care home provider. Um, their proposal includes a 73 bed care home with nine extra care units over three stories. You can see their initial ideas there on the right, it provides 24 hour nurse care to patients. And um, important to note that part of the site will remain open as open space, um, which we, we are, we're going to be uh, pushing for lots of enhancements in relation to that. So gym equipment, play, play space, uh, water features, etc. 
Um, the agreement with Montpellier provides the council with a capital receipt. Um, there's also a commuted sum which will contribute to improvements to the footbridge to the north and also a range of um, Section 106 contributions that, to cover other infrastructure. Um, and it's anticipated that the home will employ around 70 to 80 um, full-time equivalent staff. Moving on to Pitsy. Um, so the Pitsy Phase 2 um, a project that we've talked about previously um, and we've mentioned before that there's viability issues around the, uh, the, the, the work that we've been doing with LCP. Um, those issues haven't gone away. Um, as I've said there, they've proved insurmountable in terms of viability. So therefore the council um, is going to consider an alternative approach here. Um, the council's going to undertake initial feasibility work um, and will be undertaking community consultation to consider alternative options for the site. And that could include looking at including other sites uh, in, in Pitsy, uh, linking that with um, other associated um, sites. Um, it could also include still working with LCP to some extent. So this is certainly not the, us closing the door on that. Um, it's just us uh, potentially taking control of what we have um, control of. Um, and it will also definitely include an element of soft market testing um, with the market, with potential partners for what might be achievable there. Um, certainly in light of the viability issues that LCP have found. So it's the beginning of, a, of another sort of phase really for this, for this piece of work. And, and the council are gonna be moving into, the, into the, um, the front seat of this actually. Quick update on Pitsy Bingo Hall. Um, obviously, um, so following the fire, um, a section 215 notice has now been served by the LPA. Um, that relates to um, untidy land and it requires a demolition and removal of the entire property or reinstatement to a specific standard. So a, a, an automaton has now been issued to the land, the land owners um, and they have 12 months to comply with that. What I want to say here um, publicly is our door is very much open to the land owners. We're, we're, we're ready to, to sit down and talk about options. Um, as it has always been um, in relation to um, regeneration, uh, we'd be more than happy to work, work with, the, uh, with, with the owners on that to look at options. But actually what we can't have is an ongoing um, potential health and safety issue without, a, without resolution. So we now have drawn a line in the sand. There's a reasonable amount of time for uh, the, the owners to turn it round. Um, but as I say, our door is open and we're you know, uh, ready to ready to work with work with them, and building control are going to continue to make regular safety inspections of the site. Finally, um, Landon Town Centre, um, and you can see that's a you know that that picture is obviously from February, isn't it? Because of the snow. Um, so the work on the Swan Office is progressing well, with the roof um, being installed and the facade now sixty percent complete. Um, terms are being finalised for the phase one retail tenants and these um, will be handed over this year uh, with, and they, they will then carry out their fit out. So marketing for the phase two retail units will start in earnest in the next few months. And the Lidl site um, will be handed over for a start on site, um, as in handed over to Lidl to undertake their build in the spring. And um, the landmark residential site is complete, handed over. 12 of those 14 units have now been sold to shared owners. And then progress is, is still being made on, um, in relation to the new health centre, in relation to the, uh, uh, the design of that. And the, legals, um, the legal agreements uh, do need to be progressed to enable a potential of start, uh, start on site later this year. And officers have been helping Swan um, to just to, to move that forward and have uh, been in attendance in a number of meetings to, to um, resolve uh, issues in relation to the design and, and push that forward. So I think that's my last slide. So yeah, I'll stop sharing and take any questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, thanks Matt, Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Chairman. Can I um, personally thank um, Matt and Caroline 
um, following our weekly sessions in getting the Wickford car park to this particular stage with, despite other people thinking there was going to be, there's no multi-storey car park, there's no residential, as some people in Wickford were putting out there was going to be. We've got to this stage through a lot of hard work. And I think that when we get to the next stage, Wickford will benefit a great deal. Can I just ask Matt, you mentioned the footbridge. With the, with the scheme in the car park, so would the footbridge in, be included, you know, the enhancements we want to make to it, would that be included there as well? Um, Councillor Harrison, we picked that up in the in the, um, the the part two update later. But just to say, the works um, are being discussed with the exact um, specification of the works are being discussed with Essex County Council at the moment. Um, the there's a contribution from Gibraltar Walk um, from the from the owners in, in Gibraltar Walk, and, and also um, it it will link into the main car park as well. And making the, on your board, what you indicate improvements to the footbridge. And yep. I want to make it clear any improvements will be for the whole footbridge, not just for one section leading. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I think, um, Councillor Harrison, we can have those discussions at the application stage uh, um, as part of the 106 agreement. Um, the works for the works we've discussed with County so far doesn't don't cover all the works, but they cover they'll get it up to a certain level. The additional costs, the additional works will take it almost back to what it was originally. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Thanks, Chairman. I'm, I just want to make a couple of brief points at this stage, but I would like to speak on the part two items later on, um, and that. Uh, relates partly to what uh, Councillor Harrison has just said around the um, Gibraltar Walk uh, footbridge. And I really wanted to know how far involved Basildon has got with the county on it. And the reason I say that, I've had notification that uh, it is already going out to tender for works there, which are due to be carried out in about a year's time. Um, and there are a variety of range of specifications for the work that's to be undertaken there. So what's the level of discussion around that that's happened with county? Because as far as I'm concerned, county are ploughing ahead with that as a project on their own. Um, so some clarity around that. And just on the um, broad brush approach to the design on, um, I'll call it the co-op car park site, um, it does look to me as though it's almost an exact replica of what was planned with Sainsbury's about uh, 10 or 12 years ago before they pulled out. Um, they were looking at about a 40,000 square foot uh, uh, unit on that site, similar to the one over at East Main. Um, but uh, as I have a bit more to say that under part two, if I may. I was going to say, let's leave that stuff to, to part two when we can get into that. On the first point around discussions with county, uh, Christine and Matt, do you want to come back in on that? I think actually Caroline is... Uh, yeah. Sorry, Caroline. Yeah. So but we're in we're early discussions with Essex County Council regarding the bridge, and I actually had a conversation with them earlier today regarding um, proposals. They have actually got it scheduled in their work plan for works for year 22-23, just to do some routine maintenance, do some repairs, painting. But obviously this is a key bridge that links the town centre to the eastern areas. And we want to do some further works and with the projects that are coming forward it really creates an opportunity to make some opportunities to to make it a more usable bridge make it cycle friendly and at the moment it's not even dda compliant so we're in the very early discussions about actually what could be possible and what Im improvements could we do to benefit local people can i just come back briefly on that chairman just before you do i think one of the things that we we should pick up then especially I, I did not know it wasn't DDA compliant. So one of the things we should pick up is that we will, the next committee meeting, we will be hearing from Dungay's team around the inclusive uh, project that we've been working up in terms of Basildon Town Centre. That obviously needs to be extended to, be, to all of our town centre and all of our regen schemes um, as well. So we need to ensure that Dungay's team are, are also looking at 
um, consultations with our disabled residents in, in all five towns, not just in, in Basildon on that. Councillor Buckley. To come back briefly on that, um, the draft specification that I've seen for county on this bridge is not just a refurbishment. It's a, I suppose actually it is, it's a major refurbishment, not just a tart up, if I can put it that way. Um, so I think that there probably do need to be some more discussions between the two parties there. The other observation I would just make to you, you mentioned about cycle friendly and uh, the County Council, as you know, is very keen to encourage cycling and, and pedestrian as means of uh, people moving about. I would just suggest to you, and I will suggest this also at County, that that bridge is quite narrow. I don't consider it to be safe for cyclists when there are pedestrians on there. And uh, I will be arguing that it should be no cycling across the bridge. Push your cycle across the bridge, get on it at, when you reach the other end. So perhaps that's something that uh, officers can uh, reflect upon. Uh, Christine, do you want to come back on that? Um, yeah, the, um, as far as I know, I think Caroline's the same, is that they... Um, there isn't there isn't the funding to do the full works and I think as part of the discussions we've had with county is they are building up that project to pr produce a fully functional br functioning bridge but all they've got from the discussions I had all they've got in the in their budget is to do this sort of um as as Caroline said the basic works so what they have they're drawing up is the is the advanced works to, to meet with the with our discussions we've had with them about the additional money that we've we had to keep and secure is that helpful yeah it differs from my understanding but i will deal with that at county hall as well yeah. Yeah. okay thank you councillor morris yeah thank you chairman uh, chairman as a registered disabled person as i now am i'd be interested to find out what is not disabled uh, friendly about that bridge because uh, I do actually use a wheel wheelchair now from time to time. Um, so I'd be interested to find that out. Okay. Does any officer wish to offer a reply now or should we write to Councillor Morris? Caroline? I, I believe that there's steps on that bridge, particularly at the lower levels, and there's no ramps to get up, which can make access difficult. Okay, Councillor Burton Sampson. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Matt, for that presentation. Um, I just really wanted to put on record my, my thanks to Matt Caroline and the regeneration team for the work they've done over the last year and a half. I mean, it, it's great to see so much finally coming forward to get Basildon Town Centre, Wickford Town Centre to support Langdon and to get Pitty Town Centre moving again. Um, you know, we are coming out of a, a really awful period that we, we all know is going to have a long-term impact on the country. And we're coming out fighting with a, a youth zone um, about to be built, um, hopefully subject to planning. Um, and the work that's been done around that has been outstanding in such a short space of time. The, the prospect of the the HIF project that we've just seen, the new cinema about to open um, early next year, um, and then to see the inward investment coming into the town as well, in Basildon in particular, is really, really exciting. Um, so I wanted to personally thank officers for their work over the last year and a half, um, bringing these projects forward. You've genuinely given Basildon a future at a time when if these things weren't, weren't in place, as the may not have a future. And I'm sure the same can be said for Whitford with some of the projects coming forward there as well. Um, and I'm sure the momentum we've seen our other towns have a secure future as well. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor Burton Sampson. Uh, just a couple of points uh, quickly from me. The first is around um, in, in the Basildon regeneration, uh, the Radiant Arts project, uh, which uh, we uh, know is being progressed uh, with Ken Porter from Basildon Heritage uh, and also with Lee Chapel uh, Primary School. Uh, they've done um, a brilliant piece of work that will be part of the, the side uh, of, the, um, of the new cinema, um, which again goes to that heart of what we've spoken about on this committee before with the, the arts and the culture being a major part of, of what we're offering. To that end, we did also say uh, in um, previous meetings and in the budget uh, a couple of weeks ago, 
that we are looking to get um, that cultural summit organised for the autumn. So uh, I think uh, as an item for the work programme, we will need to discuss what that looks like uh, in our next uh, meeting. Uh, so we will need to bring that forward so that we can really understand um, with our partners at Future City who've done brilliant work for us exactly what that looks like and what success is um, and what they've done elsewhere so we can get a bit of a flavour for how we could deliver it uh, in the autumn here in Basildon. Uh, the youth zone, obviously, you know, another great uh, another great topic for us uh, going to uh, planning uh, later on uh, this month and then uh, full steam ahead to get that built. And it sounds as though uh, sort of February half term 2022 is going to be a mega half term for young people in our borough with the cinema and the youth zone uh, opening in and around the same time. So um, lots to look forward to there for our young people uh, in the borough. Uh, the final thing is around the Pitsy uh, development that we were talking about there. Um, I've been approached uh, in the last week by the owners of the Dippleview Medical Centre uh, who want to have uh, further conversations about how they could be involved in whatever new development that we, we have uh, potentially got coming forward. Uh, so we need to make sure that we are involving um, the owners of Dippleview uh, in some of our consultations there. They're a big stakeholder in that region. There's a big footfall uh, in the town centre as a consequence of Dipple. Uh, and we need to make sure that we engage with them and their patient group as well, because they've got a very active patient group at the, at the medical centre um, and they do good work. So we need to work with them. Uh, and of course, I want to say a big thank you, uh, particularly to the planning team for uh, their work on the bingo hall. Um, I know that, you know, without going into too many details, it is a difficult um, set of circumstances there, uh, not made any easier uh, in any meetings that we go to about this. But um, that timeline, the clock is now ticking. Uh, and I think that that is a, a real positive for people in Pitsy that um, within 12 months, there is going to be action on that site. Uh, one way or the other so a huge thank you um, to uh, all of the team who've been part of that uh, members I'm going to move us on because we've got a lot to get through uh, in this uh, agenda item tonight um, and the next uh, items that we uh, are going into um, are uh, items for part two uh, and that's for a mix of reasons uh, the first is around uh, the commercial sensitivity so to protect the council's taxpayer um, but Tom Ash, would you just mind uh, giving us a bit of an explanation just so we're clear um, or Trevor who, whoever feels necessary on, on why the Brook House item will be in part two just so that people who are watching fully understand the reasons for why the council has to do that. Yeah my understanding on the uh, chair is that it involves um, certain um, certain stages for the leaseholders and um, there is a certain process that has to be followed um, as there is a, um, a value uh, issue that would mean it would need to go into part two. Okay. Leslie, is that, do you want to come in as well? Yeah, I think really that this is, these are very, um, very, very initial um, beginning of this process really and we would absolutely want to make sure this was in full consultation with um, existing residents of Brook House and this is an in initial presentation to members we will of course follow that up um, but it will be unfair um, to do this in a public arena ahead of these being um, you know being um, approved and gone through this this process that, that's all really. And it is right to say we have written to all residents in uh, Brook House, so they are all uh, aware of this as well. So that has happened. We, we wrote to them on the Friday after the budget. So uh, that gives uh, an indication as to, to why we are doing this in part two. But clearly, um, once we can come back to this committee in part one, we will um, to give a full update. Uh, and of course, it will also go on Brook House to housing because it is a, a HRA spend as well. Uh, so Kerry's committee will want to look at that. So members, we are asked uh, to vote on the exclusion of the public and the press and the turning off of the recording. But I can ask members to unmute themselves. We will take a vote on this. Councillor Harrison? Agree. Councillor burton Sampson, In favour. Councillor Headley? Councillor Headley? It's frozen. Councillor Morris? Agreed. 
Councillor Henry. Agreed. And I vote in favour as well. So the motion is carried. Uh, so if 